Welcome back to ESPN's live coverage of the USBC Masters after his opening match win. Parker Bone the third finds himself trailing by 41 pins right now, Randy. And during the break, Chuck Gardner and Parker Bone the third having a conversation. We're going to go down right now to the tour product specialist for Brunswick, Chuck Gardner. Chuck, what were you and Parker talking about uh, when we went to break? Well, the lanes are starting to go through some transition right now. They were really crisp on the back the first game, and now they're starting to push down a little bit. The ball's starting to labor. Just talked about moving back a little bit left, get a little firmer, a little, a little straighter through the front, so the ball goes through the pins a little better. Thank you, Chuck. All right, so Parker Bone, sixth frame. He has seen Wes Malott throw six straight strikes. Well, after the first game when Parker shot 278 and it was all strikes except for two nine spares, he's got to feel like he's on an episode of Punked right now because every ball now is just getting nine. Mentally very difficult to recover from that. Such a successful first match. And you figure you're not going to be that strong maybe in the second match. Maybe you're not going to come out with a front seven. But Parker Bowen now sees Wes Malott in that same position. And we talked about how difficult it is to win this event, but it's especially difficult when you try to climb the entire ladder when you have five players on the show. That fourth and fifth seed have never won. Uh, the third seed has only won once. Top seed batting below 500. So I'm picking Stuart Williams today, the second seed. Really going out on the limb, Lon? <laughs> Parker back in his strike zone. Come on, bro. Now, there's still time. Parker's max score 248, but Wes Malott is already in the 240s. Malott has been having problems with that left knee. Kimberly's got a little more on that. Wes has a torn meniscus that he first felt at the World Series of Bowling late last year, and it really flared up a winter swing in Detroit. And he says a little better right now. And uh, Kimberly does have a little more on this. Lana was able to speak to Wes during the commercial break, and he said yesterday his left knee gave out just a little bit, but today it feels really good, and he doesn't think there's going to be a problem with it. So far, so good, Randy. Yeah, he told us uh, l last night as well on that his left knee has actually felt pretty good. And for a, a man of this size, having a torn meniscus uh, in that left slide knee, take, take, take it from a guy who's had three knee, knee surgeries. I, I know what it's all about to have pain on that left knee. He's, he's throwing the ball amazingly well. Perfect through six, West Malott back on the approach. Ten pen. Well, that's a, that's a really nice shot coming out of commercial. He sat for a while. They had a pin in the back. You take a look at this footwork here, and I want you to watch this left knee. Not a lot of knee bend for a guy his size. He's got more upper body and weight, with that. waist tilt. I know you got some great over here to back you up. But. I know they're with me. <laughs> that's all right. I got a couple in the back, too. <laughs> These guys squaring off here about who's got all the support. <laughs> all right, next week we're back to league action on ESPN. After three rounds, the New York City WTT Kingpins have emerged as a squad to beat, owned by tennis great Billy Jean King and led by PDW. Well, I love watching me some team ball, and the PBA League is so fun to watch. All looking to move into the league championships in Indianapolis later on. Also, we'll see Wes Mlott and Jason Sterner bowl for the Don Carter Classic title in singles. But right now, Wes Mlott with a major championship on his mind. Ends up his first spare after striking in the first six. So much pressure being put on that left knee. And of course, Qualifying may be a little less strenuous five games and then take the rest of the day off from competition early here. 
big tall guy uses more upper body tilt than knee bend. And there's two ways to get down to the foul line where you're a tall player. You either bend your knee or you bend at the waist. Wes Malott does it bending at the waist. If he had more knee bend, he probably wouldn't be on this tour right now without getting his knee fixed. First three rounds of qualifying, as I alluded to, just five games from each player. Then they moved into match play. Wes says, uh, hands off. Don't like that. He's letting Parker Bone back in this match. Yeah, especially if he misses a 3-6-10. That ball checked on him, went through the nose, and a nice break, not leaving a split. Just the 3 6 10, but not the easiest spare to convert out here. Malat does open up, leaving that 10 pin. You called it, Randy. And let Parker Bone, the third, right back in this match. That was a tough sequence for Wes Malat, having to wait a bit, get some things altered on the lane. Get some monitors moved, talking with Parker Bone. And he paid the price in the seventh and eighth. And Piker, Parker has only doubled once in this game, third and fourth frame. He's had some carry issues. Working on a strike, though. There's the double. Parker sees the opening. Run, roll, Raggy. Seizes the moment. And how many times have we seen this? Not only professional bowling, but any professional sport, when you give your opponent an opportunity or an opening, especially Hall of Famers, they just kind of walk right through that open door. Parker Bone, the third now, cutting the deficit to 17 here in his ninth now. Parker Bone the third. That dude's bad to the bone. And he is letting everybody know about it once again. Now, no matter what Parker does, he can't shut out West Malak. Malak can still strike out ninth and tenth to shoot 255. Parker's best 248. But if West Malak doesn't strike on this ball, he could lose. West Malak knows that as well. Last time on this right lane, ringing 10, great shot out of commercial. Then he stepped up on the left lane and went through the nose, leaving the 3 6 10. Trying to keep his perfect streak alive against TV matches and Parker Bone, and there's a messy strike, but it counts. Well, that's why you put spin and rotation on a bowling ball so you can carry stuff like that, and Wes Malott's got plenty of that. Now, what adjustment does he make here? First ball in the 10th frame. Educated guests coming up on the left lane. Big moment for Wes Malott. Trying to chase down his first major championship as the third seed here today. This is his first step getting by Parker Bone. Malott got that 10 pin to fall. Well, you hear how quiet the crowd has got? I mean, Wes tried to get him pumped up. He said, yo, Pflugerville, right, early on. And I'm thinking to myself, Wes, these, these people are all pulling for Parker. <laughs> the and other they're guy. Just be, they're just being polite <laughs> when they're clapping for your strike. As he carries that late 10, that was huge. Now, a strike here and good count on his fill shot. Wes Malott moves on. And there's nothing Parker Bone can do about it right now. Malat needs that strike right here. Strike and four. Malat got the strike. All but written down now. A huge moment for Wes Malat. A breakthrough moment mentally in his game. Just when he said he's ready to come back and win. When he's ready and happy to be at the bowling alley and performing as he did just there. Straight ball coming up down the middle. Great run for Parker. West needs to stay behind the foul line. Four, and he moves through. How about 10? Wes Malott. Defeating the fourth seed, Parker Bone the third, to move through 
to face second seeded Stuart Williams, and the record is intact. No four or five seed will win the Masters this year. Parker Bone the third with a farewell gift to his hometown fans here as he closes out this match. Well, he put on a good show. Yeah, we ran into a little carry problems uh, early in the game, and um, Malott tried to let him back in, but closed the door on him in the ninth and tenth, but it was a nice run for Parker, a great week, and it's always a good time when you bowl well in front of the hometown fans and family. And the family very proud of what Parker Bone III has done. They will not be back-to-back -back major winner this season in the PBA. You know, you're slipping. You're losing your average now. <laughs> we talked about the beatdown that Wes has been giving Parker on television. Not averaging 279 anymore. And that's, that's getting rough. Come on, <laughs> class act, Lon. He's a, he's a real gentleman in a class act. 255, 248. West Malott moves through a huge hand for Howell, New Jersey's Parker Bone the third. Just 45 minutes from his dinner plate. Parker Bone with a final wave to the crowd and his family. Coming up next, Wes Malott taking on Great Britain Stuart Williams for the right to meet top-seeded Jason Belmonte. Come on back. <laughs>